one thing to consider prior to assembling all of this is the length of your stages. Uh, we're looking at the 2x2 two two base stage with the 1.5 stage inserted in it right now collapsed completely. And because I left the stages equal, they're, in this example they're all 2 foot long, uh, it only gave us about a little over 3 eighths of an inch left of space when it was fully collapsed. So you'll want to, you know, when you go to implement this into your robot, make sure that you're maybe leaving an extra inch or two on your base stage, especially at the bottom, so you have some mounting points there. Um, the other thing that this has on the base stage are some additional holes that are able to be tapped for quarter 20, but they're, they're really number 10 size holes that you can uh, attach things to. Um, so you can do some triangles down to your structure just to make the whole thing more rigid and more stable or, or integrate it somehow into your robot that way. All right, so the first thing you want to do is deburr the edges of your tube so there's no sharp edges. We'll go ahead and do that. Just use a deburring tool. If you don't have one of these, you can find them on Amazon. Pretty cheap. So the first thing we're going to do is drill a clearance hole for a number 10 bolt on the bottom of the one and a half inch stage. Uh, you'll want to measure three eighths of an inch from the bottom edge of your tube and mark that. And then you'll want to drill the hole centered to the tube. I'm going to use a center punch to mark the location of the hole. And now we're ready to drill our hole on the end of the tube. So now go ahead and deburr the hole that you just drilled. And then you'll want to flip the tube over and drill the same hole on the opposite side. If you're using a drill press and you can go straight through with some reasonable accuracy, then that's fine too. Alright, so now that you've drilled both of your holes, on the end of your tube, it's a good time to check the fit and make sure that the end cap block plugs in. So make sure that goes in. Make sure your brass fitting lines up well enough with the hole that you can put your bolt in it. If you have to open these holes up a little bit, that's okay. Uh, you just really want to make sure that you can get the bolt in there uh, for a later step. Next, we're going to take our 2x2 two two tube and take the plate that mounts to the 2x2 two two section and you'll notice that there are little L-shaped features that's actually specifically for locating this and to help with drilling these holes out on the tube. So what you're going to do is just um, take the tube or the plate and put it on the tube and it should snap on, maybe be a little loose, but it should stay on there like that. And then we can center punch these, or you could clamp this and transfer drill it either way uh, to get the holes for our number eight bolts for later on. So now that you've drilled the two holes and you take the plate off, you'll see those are there. The goal with these is that you want them as close to the edge wall as possible. Even if you kind of nick the edge uh, of the material when you're drilling through, that's fine. Um, we're trying to create as much space in here for the constant force springs. So you may even want to open these up just a little bit more after you've created your initial holes. And here's a view of just how close those holes are to the edge of the wall of the material. So now you just flip the tube over and repeat the process on the opposite side. So now we've drilled all four holes on the 2x2 two two tube and you'll want to take your number 8 bolts number 8 bolts and make sure those easily go through the opposite hole and that they look straight and have no issues going through to the opposite side. Now that we've drilled our tube holes, we're going to move to assembling the cap. 
So the first thing you'll want to do is take the spring rollers, they're these 3D printed roller pieces, and just press those down inside your constant four springs. Next we'll take the plate and feed the four quarter 20 bolts through it. And you want them all going the same direction through the plates. So now we'll put the quarter inch bearings on the two inside bolts and space it out with these spacers. So the stack up sequence that you want is the quarter inch spacer, a bearing, the 1.12 inch spacer, uh, another bearing, and another spacer. And once you have it all on there, uh, it should look like that, and you're just going to do the same thing on the opposite side. For the top bolts, we'll now apply the retainer spacers and the constant force springs. So the sequence for that is you will put a retainer spacer on first with the thinner side facing the edge of the plate, and then a constant force spring, and cap it off with another retainer spacer. And just repeat the same process here on the opposite bolt. Now we're going to add the opposite plate and apply the four quarter 20 lock nuts. And you can start these by hand just to hold it all together and then we can go back and snug them up later. So now we're going to go ahead and install the quarter inch bearings and dowel rods into the plates themselves. Uh, there's little recesses in here and a cylinder cut out for the rod to sit in. So you just take one of your bearing rods and you place it in there. It will probably want to fall out if you tip it forward, so that's why we put uh, two zip ties in each kit and there's two little holes that you can feed the zip tie through and back out. And all that's going to do is just help with assembly here. These zip ties are really not necessary once you get the whole thing assembled. Um, because the tube itself will retain the bearing. But it just makes it so none of this falls apart on you while you're putting it together. And you just do the same thing for the opposite side. And you can cut off those zip tie ends just so they're not hanging out there on you. So now we're going to install the cap uh, but to do that, we have to first attach the constant force springs to the bottom of the one and a half inch stage. So you'll want to have these uh, bolts fairly loose, still not tightened or snugged all the way. If you have them snugged up super tight, you're going to have a hard time getting it over the tube. So just make sure those are loosened up. And then you'll just slide the cap over the top of the stage and send it all the way down here. And you'll want to roll the constant force spring past the interior bolt so it snaps past it and then roll it back down underneath it. I've included a washer and two number 10 bolts. Put that washer over the bolt, roll the spring down, line that up, and install it. And 
and go ahead and do the same thing on the opposite side. So now you should have the springs installed there on the bottom of the one and a half inch stage. So the next steps will be for assembling the second stage of the telescoping tube kit. Uh, you'll want to remove the previous one and a half inch stage and get your one inch box extrusion pulled out and ready to go. So now we're going to drill our holes on our one inch stage. Uh, a lot of these steps will look the same or very similar. Uh, so it, this next part should go pretty easily. We're going to mark uh, a hole 3 8 of an inch from the edge and center to the tube and drill through that on each side just like we did last time. This hole will have a number 8 bolt going through it on this stage instead of a number 10. So I'm going to use an 1164 drill bit to drill that hole. So now we'll plug the block into the end of the 1x1 tube and make sure that everything lines up. If the brass fitting in the holes that you drilled don't align very well or they look a little off and that you can't get the bolt in there, uh, just remove the block, open these holes up a little bit until they do because you want to make sure you can get a bolt through that. So now it's time to drill the holes on the top of the one and a half inch stage for the plates to mount for the one inch stage. Uh, the only thing you really got to make sure you do here is that it's on the same plane as your other plates that you attached earlier. Um, if you don't pay attention, you could have them kind of mismatched here. So I'd say just make sure you get them uh, all facing the same direction. So we're going to clamp these up and uh, transfer drill those holes the same way. Once you get all four holes drilled on the one and a half stage, uh, you'll want to <clears throat> put the plates on there, feed the bolts through the number 8 bolts, and just make sure everything lines up. Uh, everything looks pretty straight. All of this looks pretty good. But now's a good time if you need to open any of these holes up uh, to do that. So now we're going to assemble the next cap stage. Uh, it's very similar to the previous one we already assembled. You'll take the plate and feed your quarter 20 bolts to it. Now is also a good time to press the roller spacers. If they're not already in your springs, just locate those and get those ready to go. And now we're gonna put the four bearings on these bolts along with their spacers. Again, it's a similar process, just different spacing. So we're gonna take the .188 spacer, slide that on, slide a bearing on, slide the three-quarter spacer, another bearing, and another small spacer. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now on the external bolts, we'll do the same thing that we did on the previous stage. We'll take the retainer spacers and slide those on so that the small part is facing the, ins uh, the uh, inside edge of the plate. And you'll put a constant force spring on and another retainer spacer and just do the same thing on the opposite side. And now we're going to cap it off with the opposite plate in our four quarter 20 lock nuts. And you can just start these by hand. We just want to keep it so everything doesn't fall apart right now. 
And again, it's the same process with the steel dowel rods and the other bearings and the zip ties on these plates. The dowels are a little bit shorter, but that's about the only difference. We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and put those in the recessed spot there and feed the zip tie through. just so they don't fall out as we are assembling uh, the whole thing here. Once you're done, it should look like this. And once you get these as tight as you can, just go ahead and trim the ends off of them. So next we're going to slide the cap over the one inch stage. Uh, again, you'll want to make sure that the constant force spring direction is lining up with the brass insert hole that it's going to bolt into. And we'll just slide this, just slide this right in there. This is all still really loose just to make it easy to go over all the way down there to the bottom. So I went ahead and snugged the lock nuts up a little bit so it wasn't as loose but just didn't tighten them all the way. And I've rolled the constant force spring like before in between the two bearings so that the hole lines up with the brass insert. And you can use this washer I've included and put it over the number 8 bolt if you'd like. And install that now. And you'll just flip it over and do the same thing on the opposite side now. So now these springs will be attached to the bottom of your one inch stage. So to install the cap and the one and a half inch stage, it's pretty simple. You just slide the block into the two by two stage and the cap and just make sure you're putting it all on the side that you drilled your bolt holes earlier. And for this, one of the last steps, uh, we'll take the 832 bolts and this part especially may take two people because you need to push the one and a half inch stage down a little bit so that it clears so that the block the internal block clears the bolt holes that step is a lot easier to do standing it up vertically as well which is what I just did we got the two 832 bolts going all the way through with just a little bit of thread and now you can apply your two 832 lock nuts So we've got all three stages assembled here. You'll notice I have a green bungee just kind of holding everything down right now. Uh, this will fire up if I take that bungee off and that is the purpose of this step is I have included a pull pin that you can use to fully collapse the stages together and this is again probably a two or three person job just to make sure that uh, it's not going to slip on you when you're drilling. So I recommend collapsing all the stages and drilling a hole through each one, uh, at least one of each wall on each stage. And then this pin can be inserted through those stages and can be used as a mechanical release. Um, you know, if you're going out to a match, this would want to be in. Uh, your robot during transport or really any time that you're not using this mechanism um, and you can go on Amazon and buy the remove before flight flags or create your own thing to make it extremely visible that this thing is uh, has a safety mechanism on it at that point in time so I went ahead and just drilled that hole through the three walls one wall of each stage 
So it's a pull pin, and if this is pulled out, the whole thing will fire. From a safety perspective, you want to make sure that you never have any part of your body downrange from this. Uh, it, each one of these springs are six pounds a piece, so this thing will go when that gets pulled out. And you just got to really make sure that nothing important is on that side uh, when you release it. Uh, the other thing I recommend doing <clears throat> is taking the stages apart now and just blowing out or dusting out any of the aluminum shavings from when you drilled through all these stages. Those can get caught up in the blocks and kind of bind everything up. So it's a good idea to take that apart and just kind of clean everything the best that you can. Get all that aluminum out of there. So now we've really completed fabrication on all of the stages here. They're just ready to be all assembled and connected together. Now's a really good time to feed your Dyneema cable through. Um, it's probably the best time to do this since all the stages are separate. So you'll feed the cable through the bottom of the one and a half inch stage block. There's an aluminum spacer pressed into that one just because we saw in our early tests there was some wear on that piece in the center. So now there's a nice aluminum, uh, block, uh, aluminum spacer to help prevent that. And you'll just feed that up through until it goes through the end of your tube out the other side. And then you'll do the same thing and feed it up through the one inch stage if you have this stage as well. Just kind of push that in through there and feed it through both. This is just the easiest and best time while these are all separate and apart. And then when you feed it all the way through, you can kind of uh, just make sure you have enough slack out of each end so that it doesn't pull back through yet. And speaking of binding, that is why all of these are lock nuts on this side uh, instead of a threaded connection because what I found while doing this is this can be somewhat sensitive. Um, if you're finding that things are binding and aren't moving as smoothly as you'd like, I would check all of these, these lock nuts, uh, loosen them to start and just kind of loosen things a little bit each at a time until things start moving smoothly. Uh, there's definitely a dialing in process that needs to happen on this and uh, once you get it set it's usually fine but uh, if you're having issues just kind of start by loosening things up a little bit and usually that makes everything run a lot smoother. Congratulations you've finished assembling your thrifty telescoping tube system. If you have any questions feel free to contact me at contact at the thriftybot.com and I, uh, just let me know if you guys have any feedback or questions. Thank you.